Good morning, this is totally random. Featuring Franz Baruna and Andrew Embler. Totally Random, your weekly news and chit-chat show about Concrete 5, the community, and all the exciting things that entails. It is May 25th, 2012, and uh, I'm Franz, this is Andy. Hey guys. Here we are. Uh, let's jump right into it. News, reasonably light news week. Uh, we are still offering the awesome special deals on the last ever CTO led training stuff. Uh, so we already did the developer intro thing. If you missed that, too bad for you. Uh, but I think we're about to do basic block building yeah, and then advanced block yeah, building. And got them all there. It's all in there. Something we want to do. Scheduled up. Yeah. So uh, we just promoted that in our e newsletter. If you don't get our e newsletter, uh, you're missing out on fantastic deals and savings and stuff. Uh, we send that out once a month, and you can sign up from the community tab on the website. Uh, and if you are interested in getting the the, the last ever CTO led training uh, for a mere ninety five dollars for a training session versus the typical two ninety five, dramatic savings. It's quite a deal. It's quite a deal. Sixty eight percent savings. Um, you should sign up because it's fun, right? It's it fun. fun. It was yeah, fun. you guys had a great yeah, time. Yeah, we actually right? had a lot of people on there and yeah. had a lot of questions asked. Mm -hmm. It's good. An experience you'll never forget. <laughs> uh, so that's being offered, and um, yeah, you should you should get it. Um, in other news, uh, decided this morning we were going to share something awesome that we're working on. Uh, it's been uh, super secret, but you know we haven't really been talking about it. But yeah. now we are. Uh, so, we have uh, done a fair amount of work with larger organizations, enterprises using Concrete 5, and um, they love it. You know, they're, they're often very used to uh, really painful experiences in terms of getting content up onto their web presence, and, um, you know, to be able to see a typo and fix a typo is compelling no matter who you are, and, or how big your problems yeah. are. Uh, so we've been working with some, some big organizations over the years, um, many of which you've heard me often lament that I can't actually name. Uh, and one of the things that they frequently need is more powerful workflow control. So with Concrete 5, uh, we have taken what we, we uh, call with a, well, we call it binary workflow. So you can approve a page uh, or you can preview a page, uh, in which case any admin can see it, but there's really only two states of that page. It's either live or it's going to be live. Uh, same way that WordPress works, right? You can, hey, I'm still working on this blog post, you're okay, now this is published. But one change with work. Yeah, yeah. Conceptual. Yeah, in, in gross terms. Yeah. yeah. There are two and that's states nice. of it. Two yeah. states, and that's nice. Uh, of course, there's permissions, and you can control which groups can see what, and so you can kind of create your own more powerful workflow if you need to, uh, but there's no real great way to do that. And what we have found is larger organizations often um, not often, but sometimes need multi-step workflow. So a uh, content editor makes a change, but their manager has to approve that. Some other manager needs to approve the change that the manager approved, then it goes into QA, they need to approve it, then it has to go off to legal. Legal needs to make sure that you're not making any claims that can't be made. Then it goes back to marketing, marketing has to say, yeah, that still looks good, and then finally it gets published. Yeah. And so they're looking for a tool to, well, how do we manage, how do we know where it changes, and it's all well and good that I can edit my live website. That uh, sounds liberating, but also sounds kind of terrifying to these organizations. Um, so where is my multi-step workflow? Um, happily, that now is coming together. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the changes that, if you've been watching the, um, uh, the kind of development branches of Git, you've seen us make to advanced permissions, uh, have been made because we know we're building this workflow tool. And Andy has been uh, feverishly typing away on his yeah. loud keyboard, and yes. uh, the workflow tool is coming together. Uh, so we've got a couple of screenshots that I can have Matt throw up, and I don't really know what order they're coming in, but if you throw them up, I'll just talk about them as a check them out. All right, so this is the waiting for me report. So this would be a dashboard interface that uh, any admin or editor type can go to, and it would show them every 
workflowable thing that is waiting for them. Yeah. Uh, so you can see there's a couple buttons on the side there, and they can either kind of move something on to the next step, deny it to the last one, uh, and you get some status and the URL and um, some description of what the action is. And you can kind of see there's some examples of two different workflows at play in this particular setup. So for my fake site, we've set it up so that uh, any time you uh, move a page, you have to enter this multi-step workflow that Franz was talking about. But if you delete a page, there's only one step to that workflow. It's a special administrator's group that has to approve that, but uh, there's, only, uh, there's only one step for that. And that's why, if you can read those button labels, you see that one says move to whatever that step All is. All the insurance, yeah. 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 Um, and then the other one is delete page if it's in the red. Yeah, scary. so that's a great point. You can have different types of workflows for different types of actions with this tool. Next slide. Ah, that's us. What else you got? Okay. Uh, okay, so if you hit cancel or you're, um, you're saying no on a step there, I believe, or maybe you're saying yes yeah, or whatever. You're saying, uh, yeah, you're canceling it and moving it back. Moving it, it back a step. And as you do so, of course, you are asked to give us a comment as to why. And then all of that back and forth is, uh, is tracked against the action as well. Next slide. Ooh, transition there. Uh, looks like we're just, we're just creating a new workflow. Anyone who's familiar with uh, Concrete 5 dashboard stuff won't be all that impressed by, uh, by this interface. What else you got? Nothing. Nothing. So, so that is the content flow. You can see we've got three steps. Um, this is kind of at a high level without putting any of those steps in edit mode, but you know, first local management can uh, to make the change, that goes to quality assurance, which then goes to final approval. Any of these steps can actually succeed or fail to any other step. Yep. So you can do things like say, quality assurance can't change pages. All they can do is approve or deny something. And if they deny it, it goes all the way back to the beginning. Uh, but if they approve it, it goes off to legal, which can then, you know, that you can, you can Sky's the limit. Yeah, right. These can be. Uh, then you could branch theoretically do some interesting reporting based on that. Yeah, like, you could. Uh, who, what, uh, show me all the things that made it to the second failure step because... Who is the biggest denier? Yeah, exactly. Right. Uh, all right, what else you got? Uh, so this is what that, one of those in edit mode. So you're looking at one step within a workflow. Uh, when it's approved, go to step two. When it's denied, workflow terminated is what we are just kind of talking about. Um, there's some tabs here, I don't know if we have shots from or not, but you can control, oh, you can control everything. You can control what the permission, you can reset permissions at any step. So if you want to change the permissions on the page throughout the workflow, so once it goes into QA, QA can see the page or you know some other group can see the page, but uh, they can't change it. You can, you can update the permissions through each step uh, and you can control who gets access to this step. So you can start to do things like, uh, you know, local management is everybody in the local management group plus Matt, because Matt's awesome. Uh, and so you get the same kind of user group uh, choices that you, you get throughout Concrete 5 for that type of thing. Next slide, awesome Matt. Uh, this is a page. Someone has started some stuff here. You can see they are... Yeah, there's two workflows yeah. pending on this and they are in direct opposition. Right, they're trying to both move the page and delete the page. And so you can have different workflows are now, would, would be attached to specific permission types. That's the extendability of permissions. Yep. And so someone has requested to delete, someone has requested to move, and both of those have triggered their own workflows, which since this person has access to approve in both steps, they're seeing both of and both can go on their own cycle and yeah. what happens is what Yeah, happens. basically, so if, if currently in Concrete 5 we have sort of a hack together version of some of this stuff and this is actually the underlying system is replacing that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, if you have advanced permissions turned on and you've turned off the ability for a certain group to approve a page, but they have the ability to delete it. They won't actually be able to delete it right then and there. They get this weird little like, you've requested this page is deleted. Delete action, and yeah. then only people who can approve that page can actually finish that action. So deletion, moving, there's a couple of things yeah, that we have that like these weird actions yeah. that we never kind of bury. Yeah, so what this is doing is replacing that basically. Um, if you have delete access to, your, to a page in advanced permission, you can just straight up delete it. But since that's a workflowable permission, you can attach a workflow to it that whenever anyone requests it to be deleted, 
we actually, it has to be, that workflow has to complete successfully before the page will be deleted. So there's a lot more. Uh, we are both adding lots of new functionality and kind of tightening some stuff up behind the scenes. Cool stuff. Any more shots or is that the, that was it. That's workflow uh, at a very high level. Yeah. And the version that's in Git, uh, that's a little bit out of date with the version that's in Git. Uh, we are, the version in Git is uh, very, uh, the multi-step isn't in there, but the uh, um, basic stuff is. And uh, right now that version is in a high state of flux. I would be surprised if you can install that version. Yeah, yeah, we're still we're still tinkering uh, around. Should be. Uh, and what you'll end up having, having as, as you would probably come to expect out of us, is um, there'll be some improved tools around basic workflow management. Yep. So um, even today, right now, if you've got clients that would like to be able to get a report of any page that has uh, pending changes that need to be approved, you can do that. Yep. Go to the uh, sitemap, do the page search, and there's a attribute there of uh, pending versions yep. or pending approval or something. Approved, yeah. Yeah. And you can turn that on, you can see here's a list of all the pages in your site that have some type of pending approval. Um, so we will take what we're working on here and build some kind of light version of, you know, workflow, single step workflow with better reporting around it, um, probably into the core or as a free add-on. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, much of the more powerful multi-step, hey, you're part of a huge organization that has dozens of admins that needs to do this in, in weird paths, uh, that will be a, uh, an add-on that will exist on top of Concrete 5. and. Um, that would be that would be awesome for the people who need it. Yeah. Uh, uh, they can help fund the development of these types of things, and uh, for all the smaller sites in the world, uh, they, they won't have to. Yeah. Uh, so everybody wins. So that's something cool. We're working on it. Um, got a few different few different folks that, that need it. So uh, we're building it to some very real requirements, and you know I'd expect it to be available in months, yeah. not, not quarters. Sometime this summer. That sounds about right. Sounds about right. Yeah. Pretty cool. Any questions on that before we uh, forge ahead? Or should we wait till the end? Well, we'll wait till the end. If you have questions on I think it's because other the questions. jaws are, are down. They're just they drooling on their tip. Oh, God, work I never thought it was possible. Uh, we'll let them digest, but that'd be a fun thing to talk about uh, when we get to how we do that. Uh, moving right along, karma time. Come on Sweet, we have any karma pictures? Uh, we sure do. All right, let's look at it. Let's take a look at these. We got two from Barking Tuna. This one's a car. All right. Concrete five stick. Nice. And he was also kind enough to place one of his on a laptop that he owns. Oh, I love it. Everywhere you go, everybody knows. We got a progress update from Bert Olton. Nice. Those are, oh yeah, yeah, I've seen that one. We got a, our, our hand lump of steel is looking steely. <laughs> there you sure go. Is. Yeah. And then we got one from Ella Horsewell in the UK. Oh, I like this one a lot. This one's got some fancy tagging abilities. So, uh, yeah, that's beautiful. Cool. Well, thank you as always for sending in your pictures. Uh, if you would like stickers, uh, we'd be happy to send them to you. Yeah, Julie, I'll stick them in the mail for free. All you gotta do is put your mailing address into the form on the bottom of our swag page. Your mailing address is your physical mailing address. It's got new lines, a zip code, or some type of postal thing wherever you live. A guy's gonna come to your house with stickers in an envelope. I cannot email them to you, I cannot fax them we to you. Should, uh, we should highlight the best of the failed attempts we at should. sending us up an, an address. Failed sticker address. <laughs> Bob. Bob. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's so, going to just give people ideas yeah, to spam our box with crappy addresses. Hypothetically, Hypothetically, we could do like an <laughs> international address validating type thing we're sending it to you, but that sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, if you want stickers, I would love to send them to you, so just let me know. I will not send anything else to you, nor will I send your mailing address or sell your mailing address to anyone else and I don't care. Uh, so your, your privacy is safe with me. Um, cool. Oh, the, the, the machine. Did the machine run? It did. Sweet. What do we got? We got Anchored Butterfly winning a copy of the dealer locator for helping. Nice. We have Host Co. Uh, winning a copy of the dealer locator for promotion. Sweet. 
And then we've got Minkress winning the dealer locator as well for doing work. Awesome. Yeah. So dealers are going to be located this week. They are. Find some keeps up in here. And of course, we're doing a bunch of dealer locator changes as well. So that thing's getting better by the minute. Yeah. Uh, well, that's sweet. Thank you very much for uh, all the help that you guys and gals provide. Uh, putting the product, promoting the thing, helping people in the community. It's all very important. Uh, it's, it's awesome. We continue to be the fastest growing open source CMS out there, and uh, we all appreciate it very much. Public forums? Introducing Fun in the Forums! <laughs> All right, I think just two fun with forum threads this week, reasonably light. Uh, the first I'm going to answer here in real time. <clears throat> Pull this over. Computer. All right. Mm, lost it. My client broke my site. Where'd that one go? Bring it right back up. You got it already. Yeah. Can you read it uh, while I bring it up there, Matt? Yeah, sure. So, subject is client updated his site and he broke it. Uh, his site will now not load. Upon launch, it gives the following error. Class loader not found in the dispatcher. That doesn't and sound good. Line 23. Uh, any help? Very much appreciate it. Yeah, client messed his site up good. All right, so th there are very few things that um, that I would say we would do, we would we, we, that we would absolutely plan, right? Like around the office, it is rare for me to. Well, there's no way that could happen, yeah. right? Because things happen. Yeah. Things in the weirdest way things oh, yeah. happen. Yeah. Entropy yeah. is uh, entropy is complicated. These are, these are beasts crazy. of systems, and you know, uh, there's something about life that if you say that could never happen. You always get burned. So. <laughs> Uh, it is rare that, that either one of us would say, I just absolutely no way. Um, there is no way that this could happen if you weren't messing around with files on your server. I posit there is no way you could break dispatcher like this if your client was just editing the site. What do you think? Yeah. Let's look. Yeah, something really strange is going on with this because I, it looks like it's an updated site because that's why it's actually looking in that updates directory for 5422 but we're well, looking in an updates directory that's odd yeah like so they they updated the site is what they said mm. so it's do it's starting correctly and looking in the updates folder for the updated copy of the dispatcher but that loader not found is really is pretty crazy because I see I read this I read update is like change some content I think you're right you're saying update like I ran the update. no I think they yeah yeah, they yeah that makes they, a lot more sense yeah like, dude you can't put a page in edit yeah no that. no I don't think so um oh yeah um. Get the update all the way down, Luke. That's that yeah, wouldn't have unzipped. Yeah, that's true. If they did it through the dashboard. Um, maybe you tried to maybe it's through FTP. Yeah, yeah, FTP. Not the update through the yeah. dashboard, but the um, it's got to be that some of the files didn't make any class loader not found halfway through dispatcher. Yeah. And there's loader is interesting because it's the only well it's one of the only things we load we load it at the end of a, a base because we need it to load everything else so we have to assume that it's in a certain spot and we use PHP's require function to get it but everything else we load through the loader function so I'm wondering if for some reason that base the loader that, that PHP call got to, got to, <laughs> we've got removed or there's definitely something crazy going on. Yeah. Yeah, so somehow the new core that comes on the update is corrupt. 
what you're saying. Yeah, I guess. I think it must be. Greg chimed in here on IM and said maybe uh, permissions on the updates folder would be out of whack. Hmm. It seems like that would might just default back to the regular folder, the regular concrete core from before, though. You think if it couldn't? Well, I don't know actually. <laughs> yeah, that'd yeah, be weird to get. But yeah, if one of those files, if dispatcher was fine, but like a file it's calling isn't, mm -hmm. perhaps. Yeah. All right. Well, that's. Yeah. I'll post that reply and see if we get this conversation going. I was hoping that that was a client made edit change. Like, no, someone no, replaced those files. So. But no, as we read it now, in the light of smarter people than I, it was like an update gone horribly awry. Yeah, Jay Steele suggests maybe they ran a memory during the update process. Yeah, I can see that. Causing some weirdness, although not. I can't find a class that feels like something's off. Not like it failed at doing something. Yeah. Because it looks like it is, in fact, reading a file that's unzipped in that directory because it's reading dispatch. Yeah, so if it unzipped, it had yeah. to get, you know, unless they FTP develop in parts. Yeah. Well, I posted a that's message. Possible. Maybe some other people will chime in, help this poor guy out. Because yeah. that does not sound awesome. No. Uh, the other fun with forum thread that we had is uh, lengthier, but happier. Um, my browser. You got that up there, man? Right? I do. Uh, no need to read all of it because it's rather long. Uh, you can scroll down and get to the final answer, though. Okay. Um, I believe this one is the send email on uh, registration. Yep. So this is a uh, little bit forever. People are trying to send an email when new people sign up uh, to your site. I'd like to get an email notification when that happens. Sure, very reasonable. You see an awful lot of back and forth around ways to hack that, make that happen. Uh, and then as you get towards the end, you'll see Jordan chirping in with an official answer, or marked official answer. Uh, because we did this. We, we added we this did. to the class. We saw people asking for it. Yeah. And uh, a pull request. Five, five plus. Yeah. Someone made a pull request. Works really well. Uh, things got yeah. improved. One of the... It is an example of one of the challenges with running an open source or running any software project that lives on for years with forums that, <laughs> you know, it's a yep. question. So here's this old question that, like, and there's all sorts of, like, you can do it yourself. Hundreds of replies. And, yeah, and interestingly, you see, I think because of the threading, you see people are still kind of, like, trying to apply the... What, what scripts do I copy? It's like, yeah. no, dude, just upgrade. It's already in there. Yeah. Uh, so I just replied to that. No, Mark mine is best answer, too. Uh, yep. It is there. Upgrade, and you can do that. No problem. So, uh, thanks. You need to edit yeah, to, there's, the, to, there's this in, to this form update as of whatever this is built in. Oh, yeah. So that people aren't. Wow, this I'll do that. Freaking rough. Admin edit. This is now included in the core. Just upgrade and enjoy! Nice! Boom! Boom. Oh. Somebody probably saw the activity on this post and was like, good grief. Good grief. Grief. Uh, Alright, well that's enough of that. How about, what did you get and get? What did we get and get? All right, man. What'd you get and get? Uh, I got a big, got a big one and get. Big one. Uh, All right, that's, that's why we had to wait two weeks. <laughs> um, actually, uh, I've been talking with Makris, and this is probably the reason why he won the development uh, prize, the Karma Prize this week, because I gave him a bunch of Karma points. Uh, I told him a while ago, and I think this came up on totally random, that while Twitter Bootstrap 2.0 looked pretty cool, it uh, it was going to take a significant amount of legwork to get it working in Concrete 5, just because the first one took a bit of leg work as well. But they changed everything in, in version 2. So it was going to take a, a lot, and it was not high on our priority. He asked at some point if uh, if uh, we'd be interested in him taking a crack at it. I said, by all means. Sure. So uh, I followed his progress for a while. He was in a special, his own branch, 
and I. <laughs> his own, he was in his own branch of uh, okay. the, of get up, and uh, and uh, I forked it and tested it out, and uh, we had to go back and forth for a little while, but I uh, finally it's. Um, you know, it's not 100 percent, but it's it's pretty darn close. It's, it's 85 percent, and uh, there's enough cool stuff in there that I think are, is going to look really nice in our own uh, our new permissions and workflow stuff, um, button wise and all these new icons and stuff. So uh, I pulled that in. That's and, great, uh, and that is in there. So that's also in the development branch, and that's probably why stuff looks a little crazy in there in, in certain spots. But uh, we're trying to tighten it down for as much backward compatibility as we can muster. But uh, we don't want to be left behind because they added a lot of nice stuff. Yeah. So, uh, well, that's totally awesome. Yeah. I mean, this, this is news to me as well, everybody. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, well, I actually took another look at it after the first workflow changes, and one of the, the feedback was like, "Is there some way we might be able to get um, denote in the buttons whether a button moves a step forward and backward in workflow?" And uh, as you may have seen, Bootstrap 2.0 has all these little buttons, buttons that yeah. works in buttons, and so I was like, "I wonder where that, where the last, uh, where that." Uh, what the status on that stuff is. So I took a look at it and worked on it a little bit and put his changes in and they applied. That is sweet. Yeah. In fact, strangely and apropos, I actually woke up, literally woke up last night worried about forward compatibility on interface design with Concrete 5. Yeah. Because it was a beast getting bootstrapped to work in the first place. Yeah, and uh, we had to, we have had to add a fair amount of legacy styles in order to not force all add-on developers to remake crap again. Yeah. Um, so we are making some assumptions based on like it, so it's not a hundred percent bootstrap 2.0 behavior, but all the new stuff is in there. So for example, uh, bootstrap 2.0, they removed all the default table styles. Like they added all those paddings and, and mm -hmm. margins and stuff. Then I'm sure they got a ton of feedback, as we did, that like people tried to use data grid plugins and stuff like that, and it made it look like crap. And uh, so then they removed all the default styles and added classes for it. But if we were to do that, we'd have to tell all our add-on developers. Yeah. 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 So we may eventually do that. We just can't operate on that quite of a quick timeline. Right. So. Um, so now, actually, if you're an add-on developer and you have a table in your code, you could look at Bootstrap 2.0 and add those classes in there. It's not, they, they're going to be added automatically because of legacy concerns, but at some point we might take them out. So, yeah. so um, we do have the luxury of being able to make those changes gradually. And, and at this point, I'd say, uh, compatibility-wise, like, we're 90% there. Back. Yeah, I mean, any, it any looks new, great. Any new so, stuff uh, looks awesome. So as, as we head into the future, Updating an interface is completely rebuilding it. Yeah. It's like, it's brilliant. Yeah. And, uh, and I hope yeah, that that's continues nice. to, to move that way because, you know, whatever whatever gradient is hit today will be dated tomorrow. Yeah. So it would be nice if it wasn't always starting from scratch on that. So thank you, Makris. That is awesome to hear. Sweet. PRB? PRB. PRB. And now it's time for the peer review ball. Featuring new things for that on. Right. Yeah. Maybe Matt can announce them. All right. Trying out some new stuff today. You may have noticed that uh, our awesome Balinese screen is behind us yeah, instead of the window. extraordinarily bright window that uh, washes us all out. And uh, we're also not really able to see over Matt's shoulder so much anymore. So uh, that's kind of cool. I can look at Matt. He can look at me. Hey, he can nice. use sign language to uh, tell us which out he's about to do. No, one more finger than that would be nice. Uh, <laughs> But I have no idea what he's looking at. So, where are we starting here? Bistro, right? We start with the bistro? Sorry. Start with bistro. Let me go find this where we walk. Now we did that. That was the responsive image template. Ah, that was the last one we did, yeah. huh? Bistro! Bistroing it up. Alright. Looks so like we got a theme here. We do. Some wine in it. That's cool. Looks pretty. It does. Yeah. We want to drink wine. That's rare. Yeah, this one's from Talic Man. Eat fruit. And it looks like it's got a bit of restaurant theme going to it. Very nice. Yeah. Some nice typography in here. I think I approve this one. Nice. Good job. I love restaurant themes that are mostly photography based. It seems like every restaurant website I go to is yeah. extraordinarily over designed and sucky at the same time. Yeah. You know, and typically in flash. So you're, yeah. you're like, well, what's the menu on your phone? And there's and no dice. So. This kind of thing would be sweet. You take some decent photography, and it would work with any restaurant. Yeah, that's smart. Thank you. Moving right along. 
All right, we got photo swipe. Photo swipe. Swipe. Where is it? I don't know. This one's by Osco, and it's the web image gallery for your mobile device. Mm -hmm. So we got a live demo here. I'll take a look yeah. at the screenshots first. I like the icon. Oops, wait. Got some options. Nice. Got that CDM for the photos again. Then you can swipe right through them. Nice. And swipe with my mouse here. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Got the obligatory cars and and uh, women. Cars and women. women. Tigers. Hey, these image growers don't sell themselves. No, they need some, they need some sizzle. <laughs> you can't sell the steak without a little sizzle, am I right? Truck, it's a lady. Oh my god. Okay, cool. Uh, I mean, the mobile stuff is awesome. We, we have a client now that uh, informed me that over 60% of the traffic to their websites in some markets is mobile. Wow. It's crazy. Uh, so yeah, more of this stuff, the better. Oops, don't want to go there. Next. All right, the next one we have is called Avatar. Avatar. Let's check this out. Does you feel bad about the environment? This is from Sandro Payton. And I don't see any screenshots or, or any sort of anything. demo here, so that's not so great. But it exposes user avatars via a simple URL scheme. Okay. <laughs> so I guess you can access your URLs Pretty easier. Good. Greg Joyce. Greg, get in here and explain this. This is a good choice, Greg <laughs> Joyce. <laughs> oh, Greg. <laughs> Sweet. Well, I'm sure it works. If you want to expose someone's is. avatar, there's an add-on for you, and it's free. Expose so yourself. Feel to free to try it out. Uh, let's look at user directories. All right, this one's from Chad Strat, and this is a nice, clean way to manage directories without the need for a Concrete Five group system. Thanks, Chad. <laughs> Uh, huh? okay, it's perfect for staffing listings and corporate uh, department structures. So, let's take a look at the screenshots. So, in this, are you adding, is it some kind of other data type or is it actual users? The concrete user. five users. But you're adding users. Because we have a contact directory, which this made me think of, but if you're actually adding no, users. Adding users. Number of names on the page. Choose a list. So it looks like so here he is with users. Choose users. That new. So he's all right. Well, there you go. There you go. There's a way to do that. Cool. Uh, moving along. Whip whack daily quotes. A new quote every day. Let me break them down here. Sit through this. Um. It displays a new quote every day. Sweet. Whoa. Time zones. Whoa. Oh. Okay. Uh, it's got some options and stuff. XML I, files that it's pulling the quotes from or something? I know I looked at an earlier version of this a while ago, but looks like uh, you can have different quotes for different time zones. So here's a Europe quote from Frederick, Frederick Douglass. <laughs> you know, I might posit that this is totally fine and, and not a, a wrong way to solve this problem at all. I might posit that we should up the difficulty level of this bad boy. Yeah, I think if you're making so XML files, maybe. it probably is uh, not easy. Easy is supposed to be my mom can figure it out in 15 minutes or and less. And you can't, you don't have to touch code. You don't it's to touch not code, code but mom doesn't you have to touch know what files. XML files are, so I'm going to call that. For your recommendation, I think that's reasonable. Much to Whitwax chagrin, I'm sure, but to my mom's, I think it would be under expert. But under expert, not let it slide under me. I mean, hypothetically, can you point it to a remote XML feed? That's not coding. You don't need to know PHP to do that. We don't <laughs> We're all shaking our heads in confusion. It's been a while since I've looked at that one. Um, called expert and let me uh, let him convince and us that the it's world intermediate. Way. Yeah, <laughs> read the world. <laughs> a new tagline for 2012. <laughs> All right, the uh, next one is a theme called Connect from Brian Lewis. Sweet. And let's take a look at this. 
He's got some screenshots here at first. Looks like it's got sort of a gray, black, white theme to it. Um, take a look at the live demo too. Get this up here. <laughs> cool. Nice. Got the, the B Lou. Uh, so I think the you can nav. go ahead and, and get a patent on that bad boy, man. Yeah. The, uh, the drop down auto nav. Uh, nice. Is there the uh, is there animation to it? No, no, no. Okay. No, no. Ooh. Last few had animation. No. Yeah, these things usually do. Like they do some cute with the logo and text. All right. The next one is a, another slider. This one's called Uno Slider. Uno Slider. And mobile this is friendly. by Hosco. Friendly. I like being friendly to mobiles. Cool. So yeah. well. It's responsive and touch enabled and mobile app on it. The dog is so cute. It looks like he wants to be <laughs> <laughs> Kind of squished it. Whoa! Look at the Ferrari. Dogs and dogs and cars. cars. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, cool. <laughs> You never have too many sliders. Yeah, it's got some nice transitions in here that kind of build uh, build blocky sort of uh, animations. I like those. Fancy effect. Cool. Just like last but not least, we got some weather. My Tiwi. Totally interactive weather. Ah, the weather bug. Cool. So yeah, throw uh, today's weather in different localities, lots of different footprints. Be useful for uh, colors, sizes, local, magazine, yeah, newspaper, whatever. and whatever. free. Yeah, it's a win-win-win. Cool. And that is the PRB. That's the PRB right now. So thank you everybody for submitting your work. Hopefully the new system is making everybody happy. Thank you so much. Making us happy. Yeah. So um, great. Helps focus this time. I think it does. So I think we're ready to do. How would we do that? I'm hoping there's all sorts of questions for our answers. Let's start it up. Alrighty. What kind of questions do we got there? What do you got? Alright, well, I see one from Jay Steele, 123, right off the bat. Boom. Any plans to have single page jQuery validation similar to how blocks work? Like get JavaScript strings slash CCM validate block form. That kind of function. I don't know what that means. If, uh, could you be more, like, what is... Uh, in what kind of context? To what end? Go. To what end? Thank you. That's the, those were the words I was searching for. I have asked this question. <laughs> it's it's strange to see us in confusion. I'm sure in and like in like ten seconds, like fine. Uh, he says Auto JS, but for blocks. Auto JS is in blocks. Single page jQuery validation. Uh, um, well, you could. Do this if it's a single page. You could add whatever libraries you want through the header or the footer, and then call them just as. In terms of something that loads automatically, no, I, there's no plans to do that. If they if it makes its way into jQuery at some point, we may support it. But uh, and uh, there might be. I could see how this might tie into the form validator if you ran that. Um, and then you could highlight the forms that failed. Um, it's not something that we are currently actively getting into. It's a cool idea. I wonder how it would be neat to see how that might work. I think it could work since we are using our own functions for, you know, displaying the form fields and uh, validating the code. Like we could definitely have those two pieces talk to each other from a presentation standpoint. But. In terms of AutoJS for that stuff, now you have to include your own JavaScript and run your own validation. Okay. But it's possible. Well, uh, that's exciting. Okay. Uh, more questions? Yeah, we seem to have one here. This looks like it was posted to the forum, but it's got a link to it. Um, is there any way, you know, Jump over to my screen here. Is there any way to get a page list from only a collection attribute key category object? Uh, looks like someone answered it. No? No. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like there's. Yeah, there's some 
some kind of an action here, or answer here. Yeah, okay, that's good. No, uh, if we keep going, <laughs> there's no. There's no, no there isn't. I don't think that makes any sense. That category is just a list of... All that is is a container for all the page attributes you've created. Because attributes could be for users and for files. So that function is getting an object that is just a representation of the page, all the page attributes. But it's not, it doesn't have any, there's no data about it. Like, there's no way to infer what page. There's no instance data on that. There's no, it doesn't, it's just a grouping of all, of all the attributes that can be attached to pages. Okay, I guess he posted the wrong link, so um, oh. not sure if that was the right one or not. Uh, but we'll, we'll wait to see if uh, we come up with a, the correct link for that or not. Um, got one from Ali Phillips. Why is the parent menu disable option so obscure? Uh, he just found it by a post that Jordan did, and he says, should it not be a default option to make it unclickable or route to first child? Um, this is the parent menu disable option. I think he means replace link with first and yeah. nav, probably. Yeah, there's a bunch of custom attributes like that. The auto nav does stuff with. Yeah. Um, they all work in funky ways. We had this actually come up on something else we were working yeah. on. The exclude from nav attribute uh, works the auto nav and it will hide a specific page from the auto nav, but it doesn't hide the child pages of that from the auto yeah. nav. And it was built that way because that's what it needed to do. Yeah. Uh, but it does create some weird idiosyncrasies where if you hide a page and it has children, those children end up still getting returned in the array, and so sometimes they get yeah. re-parented re by the last parent yeah. in the list. Yeah, so it's weird. The, the orphans are adopted, as yeah. it were. Uh, and so it just, it's funky. Um, I think our take is, well, there's a how-to on some of these common um, custom attributes that you can use to kind of quickly do stuff. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think, like, they are, because they are added for specific needs and then it's very difficult to change them because people are depending on them working the way they're working, um, there's a little bit of the, uh, if you know what's there, that's cool. But I don't want to have, have it in your face. Rely on it 100%. Because, I mean, it's only currently in the auto. I mean, it, it, we honor it in our own custom stuff, but there's nothing stopping anyone else from building an auto nav template or another navigation function somewhere out there that doesn't have this in there. So the auto nav honors it, but the page list doesn't. Yeah, or the custom so navigation so add on doesn't. We're going to make the default yeah. attribute, and then yeah. my mom's going to turn it on, and we're going to get all sorts of weird support that. requests. Yeah, so I mean, I could see us at some point. It, yeah, I think the right way to handle that at the time that was an easy way to to you know address that need directly but I think there are cases where you want it to work that way a hundred percent of the time and moreover if you actually go to that parent page you want to be directed you want the URL to actually take you to the first child so which this attribute does not do because it's only used for display in the map right so I, I would think that we want to you know, it, that is a need. I, I think that we could potentially address that with, you know, at a lower level. But as with anything else, if you add that in as an option to the core, you risk making the core more complicated. Like, not only can you add pages and external links, now you can add container pages. But, you know, like, I mean, it yeah. sounds kind yeah. of So well, this was a nice balance between you know, some functionality that was an Easter egg, basically, yeah. if you knew it was there, without under having to understand it. Yeah, I mean, Easter, I mean, Easter egg is like, oh, it's an axe, yeah. and it's like, it's, it's layers of the yeah. onion. Yeah. And it's documented, and it's Organic just, discovery yeah. of possibility. We could probably yeah. install the attribute. Yeah. We don't currently install it yeah, by default, because we didn't want to have a million attributes back before we had the nice way to But I could see maybe, yeah, maybe installing them and having some more help messaging around it. That yeah. kind of stuff would make sense. Yeah. So there it is. Uh, okay, we've got a question from 12345J. He asks, uh, any plans to allow PRB members to approve items if they get a certain amount of votes? Nope. No. Do not have that plan. Happy that you're but we ready. Are, if you think they're ready to go, it makes it a lot easier for us to look at them. Yeah. And we are more likely to... Certainly bump to, it to the top of the list, for sure. Yeah. But uh, no, we gotta. It's, it's our store. We gotta look at it before we're gonna sell your stuff. It's just the way it's gonna be. 
Alright, uh, Jonathan Fish asks, uh, a while back there was some talk about a reduced support notice a developer could add globally to all their add-on pages if they were away for a while. Um, do we have any plans to roll something like that out? That is a good idea. Uh, yeah. I mean, there's no reason that you can't do that today beyond the fact that if you're Chad and you've got more than a dozen add-ons, it's going to take you, you know, a little time. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that probably falls into the, that is a thing that we could build that would make your life uh, very incrementally easier. Uh, so, at some point, maybe we would do that. Yeah. Uh, a message or something that would be smart. Uh, something that would integrate with the support. Yeah, I can think of ways to do that. Something that will auto-respond if you get a private message. Yeah, something that, like, the way if you get this email, it would automatically send a message yeah. back. If we could just invent a solution for that. I love it. Hmm. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think my have solutions already. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's it's really difficult to like draw that line of like. Uh, well, put it this way: Would you rather have that, or would you rather have the way uh, an ability to sell an upgrade? Yeah. Right. There's something that only we can solve, and uh, we've been wanting to do for a while. Of hey, I, I would like to message all the people who bought this add-on. You get a special offer to buy this other add-on. Uh, or something like that. That seems probably like a more valuable use of what time we have for concrete5.org uh, to help uh, third-party devs. And anytime we can look at it and say, well, look, you know, you could just set up an autoresponder and solve this problem yourself. Uh, it's easy for us to not worry about that. All right. Well, that's the questions I see right now in the forums. If anyone has some more they want to slip in here before the uh, the end of the show, uh, feel free to. Cool. We're, uh, I think I've taken care of all the ones that I've seen. That's cool. Yeah, really quick. Okay, cool. Uh, well, it's been a rainy week here in Portland. Yeah, it's finally looking like, like a beautiful good. weekend. So we're looking forward to that. Uh, should be back here next week, I think. I think so. Do this again on Friday. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Got any fun plans this weekend? I am going to Bend. Oh, yeah, yeah. lovely. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been there in a long time. You doing the, like Black Beauty or something? No, going to see Tenacious D. Oh, see the D. Yeah, see which you. I've never done, which huh? is kind of weird. Well, uh, you would imagine. That I yeah, I probably would have enjoyed it more like ten years ago, but I, I'm still going to. I'm sure you'll enjoy it just fine. Sounds pretty exciting. Yeah, so that's over the over the weekend. Come is that back the, uh, the outside the Armory? Yeah, yeah, that's a nice spot. Yeah, and I've never been to a concert. So that's yeah, cool. it's pretty nice. Yeah. You know, when people like float by. That's kind of. Oh cool. wow! Yeah, yeah, people like float by. Oh wow! To watch for free. Oh wow! Yeah. Well, I just, yeah. well, they're they're probably not going to I know, right? Yeah, right. You yeah. See them from the back. Yeah. yeah. No, that sounds right. all right. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> not me. Going no. birthday parties, man. Ooh. I got kids parties up the wazoo. <laughs> not doing anything this weekend. So just standing around, drinking two yeah. beers. And <laughs> Talking about the dad. Refusing cake. Oh, no, actually, one of them was having a birthday party at the, uh, at the crazy uh, trampoline center of Duke. Oh, nice. You could finally go to uh, Sky High Sports. Yeah, Sky High Sports, yeah. Uh, the yeah. trampoline center of Duke. It was already taken. <laughs> it's, like a working name. It's, like, it's like a warehouse full of trampolines, seamless trampolines. Yeah, it's, it's uh, fun. Perfect place to take a six-year-old girl. <laughs> Uh, one last question before we uh, before we uh, end of this. Is uh, it about trampolines? Because if it's not, I hope so. I don't want to We're answer. done. <laughs> We're only not talking about trampolines. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, it's not about trampolines. <laughs> Can't answer it. Um, uh, the advanced permissions update. Uh, will it be in the next release? Yes. Yeah. Well, next unless major. there's some yeah, if there's some five five two or five five three type yeah, uh, some small small release, then no. Then but, no. Uh, but the next big release, yes. Yeah, which would happen mid some late. Mid late summer. Yeah. 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 There's a lot to it. Bunch to it. Yeah. There's. A, yeah. We've already. Yeah. There's. There's a lot of major yeah. stuff. In but we're we're dialing in it at this point. Yeah. We're, we're, we're rethinking some of the permission stuff. Yeah. It's basically. But not fundamentally. Just basically right. And uh, yeah. It's, it's getting that part of it is is pretty close to happy. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll we'll use this on a couple of things that we're actively working on and. Um, Take that awesome opportunity to make sure it's, it's behaving as well as we can get it behaving, yep. and then at some point we will. Um, I hope you're listening, Jordan. At some point we're going to call it an official alpha, and we're going to let it sit for 
eight weeks yeah. and uh, at least three days. At least three to four days before we say that is good. At least a solid weekend. Sure. Why not? <laughs> Moral Day weekend. Uh, no, we, we will have a nice phase on it because there are I mean, obviously there's some deep, deep, deep changes there in our own permissions. Yeah, so, they'll upgrade. It's going to be. I mean, it's it's manageable, but it touches a lot. Yeah. So, so. Right. I'm sure you'll be hearing about that when it's hot. Cool. Well, if there's nothing else, then I think we need to get to work. So thank you all very much for everything. As always, it's a pleasure, and uh, we'll see you in a week. See you. Fridays at 10 a.m. Pacific Time.